We're going to work on today is Exercise 25 from Troy Statina's Metal Rhythm Guitar Volume 1. And in this progression, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at rests. Silence within music is very important. It's just as important as actual music that you're playing. It kind of breaks things up and gives you a little bit of a break. And, and it just, if you, all you do is just play, 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 play with no silence, it's just going to be really boring. So that's what we're going to go over in this lesson. So to start out with, I'm just going to play the progression for you, and then we're going to go over it. Okay, so we're going to start out by just doing a couple measures. We're just going to play that. Now, um, the chords here are E5. And then we have at the third fret on the E string, you're going to play it four times. And we're going to talk about the count and everything after, but then you're going to go over to your. Uh, Fifth fret, I'm gonna hit that. And then you go hold it for two beats and come back to our fifth fret. I mean a third fret. And then this is the count. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. And again, we're gonna be talking about our rhythm here. But first let's talk about stopping the notes. If you don't have the book already, I suggest going and buying it because all of these you, you'll be able to follow along if you actually have the book in front of you. Um, but what we do here is we have our E5 and then we have a little squiggly line there. And that little squiggly line is a quarter note rest and that means you have to stop it from ringing. And when you stop it, you want to stop it with this part of your hand you know, your palm. And you want to lay it all the way across the strings. Not just, you know, even though we really only need to stop these, you really want to lay it all the way across the strings because you want to get a habit of doing this because later on you're going to be hitting a chord and then you're going to have to put it over all the strings. And it's not going to work if you only have it apart you have other notes that are ringing out. So you really got to get used to stopping playing your fit, your palm over all the strings. Now another thing um, which you saw me do earlier is you don't want to play like this and then palm you and then bring your hand all the way over like that. One thing is you're totally moving your wrist and then you're gonna have to move your wrist back Another thing is your pick is now down here, so now you got to bring it up and try to aim for the right spot. So what you really want to do is find that that natural state wherever your your hand and your arm and wrist are, and then just bring it straight down. See how my it's not much movement in there. I'm just bring it straight down, and that pick is staying in that same area. I may have to bring it up just a little bit, but usually if I'm doing that, I'm stopping it. I'm bringing it up anyways, but even if I did it, I brought it straight down. It's here instead of way over here, so that's really important. And then from this view, straight down. So it's really important. Whatever you do, don't get in the habit of doing this. Now here's another thing. You want to kind of do it right around maybe this area or so or anywhere in, in this area. Don't want to bring it all the way back here. Like when you're when you're doing some crunchy stuff, you're your palm muting, you're going. Cause you You want that beefy sound. You want it to actually ring a little bit. You have it over here, it's dead. You don't want it. Sounds wimpy, really, really weak. You don't want that. You want it to actually ring out a little bit. 
when you stop in a, something from ringing, you want it to totally stop. You go here, you have that weird sound. It didn't really totally stop. So you gotta make sure you bring it forward. And where, anywhere around where the pickup is or forwards is good. And so that's really, really important. You wanna make sure you do that. Now what we're do, gonna do is do the count. So we have one, two, three, and four, and. That's the very first measure. Now you wanna go do it, make sure you're stopping right on the beats. You don't wanna go one, two, three, and four, and, because I just turned this, which should be a chord note, one, two, you turn that into either an eighth note or even smaller, it might be a 16th note. It's more like a 16th note. So you don't wanna, alter that that beat because that's supposed to be a chord note it's supposed to have one full beat so this is one and you hold it all the way up to beat two and you stop it dead on beat two one two three and four and and you don't go and you want to do two quick one one two you want to do that or you don't want to go one two and stop after it's got to be dead on beat two. One, two, and then from there you want to make sure you hold that till you hit beat three. Which when you go to beat three, it's going to be three and four and because you're playing some eighth notes. So make sure you work on that. Um, you start out by you can just count one, two, three and four and, and then start trying to use your foot. Three, four, one, two, three, and four, and three, four, one, two, three, and four, and so you gotta make sure this is really, really important. You don't want to alter the either the actual notes of the notes ringing out or the rest too. You have to hold them for whatever that duration is of that particular chord or rest um, or note in, that, in this case um, oh no it's chord in this case um, so that's really 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 important so um, make sure you get that palm mutant thing by the way the palm mutant thing you can just kind of go just do a few of those just to make sure it stops and, uh, and then if you want to check all right, did I palm you all of them? Good. Or well, if you didn't, you'll hear some of those uh, ring out. So you don't want to be having it like like that. Get used to doing it nice and flat. So there you go. There's that part. And let's just take a look at um, more of it. So we have one, two, three and four and and then we're gonna go up to the fifth fret i'm doing three i'll, I'll do the uh i'm using three three fingered uh power chords which you can if you're ready for that if not just use two um but then yeah i got one two three and four and one now you see two squiggly lines that means if one squiggly line is a quarter note rest then two squiggly lines or two quarter note rests, and that equals two beats. One beat for each quarter note rest. So that means you have to hold it for beat two and three in that measure. So it was one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. So make sure, again, hold that. Here's one, hold it all the way till beat two one two three and you hold that all the way till beat four and right dead on beat four is where you're gonna hit this chord but notice when I'm, I'm hitting this one two three well I'm palm muting it I'm actually bringing my chord over to where it needs to be so I can hit dead on four one two three four you know when I do this one, two, 
I'm bringing this ready right to the uh, fret I need to bring it to. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. I'm gonna do it two times and notice how I'm dead on the beats. One, actually, do a count in three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, so forth. Yeah, so you actually, actually do this. Let that ring out. I quickly stopped it for a second there in the first time I went through. Um, so that's how that goes. The second half of that line is, um, so you have this, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Now one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. So this time I held it over beats two, three, and four, because if you look on that last measure, you have your a5 power chord there you got your squiggly line which is your chord note rest but then you have a line in this rectangle floating above it that is what's called a half note rest it's worth two beats so the quarter note is worth one beat the the um, half note rest is worth two beats so you have to hold it for three beats in total so here's the last two measures again one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and then uh, that's when the next part comes. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Again, you want to practice that all by itself, and you put it all together. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Then after that, next measure, uh, it's really basically the same thing, the second line, until we hit the very last measure. So it's one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four one two three and four and one i'm going to stop it on two but that's a quarter note rest the squiggly line and then we're going to go over to the a string and hit three on a string and five in a string so last two measures of line two is one two three and four and one two three four and those two are chord notes here's the whole second line one two three and four and one two three four one two three and four and one two three four and all together one two three and four and one two three four one two three and four and one two three four one two three and four and one two three four one two three and four and one two three four and there you go and you just notice how when I stopped it, I kept moving to the different chords. Yeah, don't forget to do that. Don't wait till the last second and then try to rush over to it. Okay, so there you go. Here's exercise 25. Now, put some work into that. Really get used to uh, the rest and you know how to stop it correctly like we went over in the lesson. And really work on that timing. Make sure you do not stop notes from ringing too early and altering the actual value of each note. You want to stop right on those beats. Maybe uh, get a drum machine, metronome, or whatever. You know that can help out. You know, work on tapping your foot. Uh, but at first, you can even just 
count it. And even if even if you're in the beginning, your tempo is fluctuating a little bit. That's just the first step. You're kind of getting used to where to stop it. And then little by little, you can even it out and then start tapping your foot, maybe adding in the metronome or drum machine or something. So uh, there you go. Exercise 25, work on that. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just keep on moving along.